Last week we posted the video of machining the drum for Dan Palovich. And in that video, I told you that I was gonna do a programming video where I take you through exactly how I program this. And that's what we're gonna do here today. Now guys, if I was to do a whole tutorial on this part, it would be about three hours long. Actually, I already did do that, and it's gonna be up on our academy very soon. And just like the others, it's gonna be completely free. All right, let's get started in this video where I'm gonna show you the unified toolpath using a clean core strategy. So I have the drum opened here in Mastercam and we're gonna take you through programming the outside diameter. So first, what is a clean core strategy? When you have a part that has a lot of complex surfaces, it can get convoluted and not be a clean, consistent tool path because of all those surfaces. So what a clean core strategy does is it allows you to create a simple surface and program off that simple surface so you get a good clean tool path and then project that tool path onto our complex surfaces that we actually want to cut. And just so happens, the outside of this drum offers a good example for how a strategy like this works. So let's get into building this tool path. So the first thing we wanna do is create a simple surface to program off of. And for that, I've made a simple cylinder surface. So as you can see, it's a simple cylinder that goes from the top all the way through the length of the drum. Now, before we build out this tool path, it's important to note that there's a couple things we need to know about building a multi-axis tool path. And that is a layered process. It's not straightforward black and white like a three-axis tool path is. Now, the three major aspects to a multi-axis tool path is your cut pattern, your tool axis, and your collision avoidance. Now, when you're building a multi-axis tool path, you don't wanna just throw all of this stuff at it at once because it gets really difficult to know what's controlling what. So we wanna approach this in a systematic way. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this tool path back to the default so I know that there's no settings left over from my other operations. Okay, I'm gonna go in and select that three quarter inch dual lock ball nose. And when I come to cut pattern, something that I like to use is morph strategy. And I'm gonna turn on our drive surface again and turn off this part. And I'm gonna select the chain on the top and the bottom of the surface. So I'm gonna select here, and then for my second morph curve will be the bottom. Now you might be thinking, why would I want to morph, use a morph strategy whenever I'm going from one circle to another? Now that's a very good point, but I find that with a morph strategy, even if I'm using the same curve from one end to the other, it helps keep that curve consistent from top to bottom. So I like to use this a lot. Now for my machining geometries, normally this would be the surfaces that you actually want to cut. But in this case, I'm going to select this simple surface that we created. Now again, like I talked earlier, we want to do this in a systematic approach. So the only thing that I care about right now is my cut pattern. Once I get that like I want it, then I can move on to the other aspects of the multi-axis tool path. So I selected my surface. Now my step over is fine at 50 thousandths. I might loosen my tolerance up a little bit and I know I wanna do a spiral strategy. Now I'm gonna leave everything else just like it is and come back and change things only if I don't like what it's giving me. Now I'm gonna to go to my tool axis control. Now typically I wouldn't set this until after I get my cut pattern selected, but I already know that I just want a simple four axis strategy here. I don't need to do a full five axis on this. So I can go ahead and set this to four axis and under my tab here, I'm gonna select my Z axis for my rotary axis. And I'm gonna tell it to point the tool to the rotary axis. And locked at angle of zero is fine there but I wanna make sure that I go to my collision control and I turn this off. I don't wanna put any collision control on this yet. So I'm just gonna hit apply and see what this gives me. Now, quickly I can tell if I turn my part on right here that I'm cutting all the way through this part. So if I go to my back plot, I can see this is obviously not gonna work. Now remember, I'm only looking at my cut pattern at this point. And I can also tell that I'm going the wrong direction, and we'll address that in a second. 
So if I zoom in here, I can see this is a perfect spiral from the top to the bottom of the part. And that's the exact cutting pattern that I want. So I'm good with this. The only thing I'm going to change back in here is instead of climb, I'm going to use counterclockwise for closed cuts. And if I hit apply here, I can tell that I'm going to go the opposite direction. Turn on my back plot. We see now we're going counterclockwise, which will give me a climb cut as I'm worked down to the bottom of this part. Now we open our parameters back up. Now in a typical multi-axis tool path, this is where I would go into my tool axis control and start fine tuning that to make the tool behave like I want it to behave. But in this case, it's a simple four axis tool path. So we've already got it set. Now we can go to our collision control and start implementing our clean core strategy. So when I turn on this first collision avoidance, I'm only going to select my flute. I only want to check against the flute of the tool. And I'm going to change my strategy to retract tool. This is what enables the clean core strategy. Now for my geometry, I want to uncheck machining geometries and select avoidance. And here's when I'm going to open up my part and select everything that I want to actually cut. And in this case, it's the outside diameter and all of these lugs. I'm going to go ahead and select all this. Now I also have made some mask surfaces that I can go in and select because I don't want it to try to jump over these holes. So I'm just going to select those and right here on this little boss. Now I also don't want it to try to cut this chamfer on the inside on both ends, so I'm going to deselect those. So now I can see I have basically everything on the outside selected. Hit OK. Now this is not a finishing path, so I want to tell it to leave 50 thousandths of stock. I might loosen my tolerance up a little bit. And I'm going to hit OK or apply. Now, like I said earlier, what that's done is it created the toolpath pattern off that simple surface and then projected that surface or projected that pattern onto the surfaces we actually want to cut. So now we get this perfect spiral from the top all the way down to the bottom of the part, regardless of all the complex features that's in between. Now, if you remember on the video, I said that I had to create some surfaces behind this lug right here for this reason right here. Now, since it's only projecting that perfect spiral onto these surfaces, when it sees this vertical wall here, it's just going to drop down right behind that whenever it can. So that's going to cause this tool to full slot behind this, this lug. And I don't want that. That's going to be way too much tool load on my tool. So what I've done is I've created these surfaces here. And what that's going to do is give me a perfect transition or a smooth transition off this lug down to the diameter of the part. So all I have to do here is go back into my parameters and add that to my avoidance geometries because I actually want to use these to actually cut with. So I'm just going to go in and select all 10 of these. Now I can hit OK again. So now we see that transition from the top down to the bottom. Now under normal circumstances, if I would have added those to try to cut them, it would have possibly changed my cut pattern. But in this case, I'm calculating that cut pattern off that simple surface that we created. So therefore it's not really changing it. And as you can see, I still get that perfect spiral from the top all the way down. Now that is the power of this clean core strategy is when you have these very complex surfaces that really can mess up your cutting pattern. I can use this and get the pattern that I'm looking for and then project it on those surfaces that I want to cut. Now all we have to do is come back and get rid of this excess stock that this toolpath is leaving. Now one other thing I want to show you guys inside of this toolpath that I thought is really neat is notice how I'm cutting from the top all the way down to the bottom of the part. Now, I already know that the three inch face mill came in and roughed this section at the top, so I don't need to recut that. 
So what I can actually do is come back in here and go to my margins. And I see I have start margins and end margins. Now what that's gonna do is if I put a value in here, it's gonna offset by that amount from the start and end of the surface that I'm cutting. So I'm not gonna bore you with trying to find these numbers. I've already found them for us. It's 1.367 from the top and 425 from the end. Now you're gonna see that tool path shorten up and only cut what I wanna cut here. Now I see we're starting right here which is basically down to the top of this lug minus the radius of the tool. And I had to shorten up the bottom because I was gonna end up cutting the bolts off on the fixture itself. So that was gonna drop this part down in the conveyor and that would be no good for anybody. So I shortened the bottom up a little bit. Now all I have to do is come back in, give myself a lead in and lead out. So if I change this, only the first and last because I'm doing a spiral cut. Now for the lead in, we're gonna use a tangential arc. And for the lead out, I don't want to arc in and out of my material, so I'm just gonna do a vertical tangent arc and hit apply. Now I can see that this is arcing from the stock side of the material, and I don't want that, so I can go back over here and just check the box that says flip. Hit okay. Now I can see I'm starting over here where the material's already cut and working my way into the material. And again, it's just spiraling around the stock, around the part, all the way down to the bottom. And what we end up with is something like this. And like I said, now we can come back in and just get rid of the stock that is remaining behind these lugs. So guys, I know I went through this pretty quick. This is where we're gonna stop on this video. If you're interested in learning basically every thought process I had on machining this OD of the part and ID, check it out on our academy at titansofcnc.com. We'll see y'all in the next one.